Look at somebody and say, we have everything we need. Amen. Let's give God glory by the clapping of our hands one more time. You may be seated in his presence. And the youth can be dismissed to the other side. The youth can be dismissed to the other side. Amen. While they go to the other side, can you just clap your hands one more time to encourage them? Let them know they did an excellent job. Amen. And those of you in the back, can y'all come on up in the front and fill up these seats? Amen. Look, we got a whole lot of youth at VLCM. Amen. Amen. Come on. I believe God today is going to continue to grow us. Amen. And our youth are evident that God is with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. We will never be defeated because we always get the victory. I'm going to say it one more time. He, the devil is a liar. I feel the Holy Ghost. God is exalted. We will never be defeated because we already have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going into Monday morning with victory. <laughs> I'm going into Tuesday meetings with victory. I'm going into Wednesday with victory. I'm already in 2024 with victory. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, all you people. Please be seated. We'll get to the word in just a minute. I have a few observations. Um, our, our ministers, our ministers, we have a training on December the 6th. That's a Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, in person only. So please come and be ready. If you're a part of the prophetic team, you can come as well. We'll be training, teaching, and activating on that night. Amen. So ministers, ministers, if you are ordained here or if you are ordained someone, somewhere else, you come. Come and get fed and get poured into before the end of the year. Amen. Amen. Also, we still need volunteers for several of our ministries, our facilities team, sanctuary serve team. Amen. Our worship and arts team. Hallelujah. And so if you would like to volunteer and serve, because here at VLC, we believe if you find a place to serve, you will find family. Amen. Amen. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, Wham, could y'all stay after service right here for just about five minutes with me, if y'all don't mind? Amen. Amen. And Pastor Tamika Glory. She's an honorary Wham member. Amen. Also, our Generations Ministry is meeting today for lunch. Amen. They're meeting at FDs, formerly known as Fish Daddies. Amen. Over there, right across the street. So if you're part of Generations, that's 50 and above, 55 and above. Amen. And join the Generations Ministry. Amen. Y'all might want to join. Hallelujah. Today, there's a couple of surprises. Also, um, if you have a question about Generations Ministry, please see Mother Bunton or Minister Myrtle. Amen. Amen. Also, stop by the VLCM store. We have T-shirts, wristbands, anointing oil, and a whole lot more. Somebody say a whole lot more. A whole lot more. Amen. Who's ready for the word of the Lord? <laughs> we are still on our Rated R sermon series. Rated R, R means relationships. And we're going to James chapter 1. But before we go there, I have to share what the Lord, what I sense the Lord is saying uh, there is a scripture in Haggai, chapter 2, verse 9. It says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Let me read that again. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. And the Lord arrested me, and he said that we have plowed well these seven years. We're almost seven. We'll be seven years old on January the 1st, officially. Um, we've, we've plowed well, especially the last three years, through trials, through lack, through loss, through disappointment, through slander, lies, misunderstandings, through pruning, through decline, through supernatural growth. We've doubled in size in just a short amount of time. But God said as we approach the seventh year, the Lord is saying that the glory of this house, hallelujah, the latter house shall be greater than the former by the way let me just you know that's good but let me tell you why we need to shout the word glory in the hebrew means abundant and presence hallelujah so that means when we say god's glory is here his presence abundantly is here and then there's the Shekinah glory of God. Shekinah is the visible manifestation of God's divine presence, especially resting on the mercy seat. Hallelujah. 
Uh, but in the Greek, the word uh, hallelujah, glory means opinion. It means judgment. It means view uh, concerning someone or something. So basically what I'm saying is God has judged us and found us faithful. And God is saying that the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Uh, the New Living says it like this, the future glory of this temple, the future glory of VLCM will be greater than the past glory. In other words, VLCM, we ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> There's about to be some greater glory. There's about to be some greater power. There's about to be some greater healing. There's some greater open doors, a greater open heaven, a greater opportunity, greater prophecy, greater miracles, greater connections, greater mergers, greater unity, greater harmony, greater increase. You ought to hop up yourself and say, I'm in the right place and I'm going to greater. Hallelujah. And whatever happens in this house is going to hit your house. So when the glory hits this house, it's going to hit your house. It's going to hit your family. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. And we've seen the visible manifestation of God's glory for years at VLCM. So can you imagine the greater glory that's on the way? Somebody say it's on the way. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has in store for VLCM. But can I get five screamers in the house today to receive the next level of glory? I need five praises to open up your mouth and release a greater, greater glory. It's a greater glory. Three people who are going through, I need to let you know greater glory is on the way. For the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Go ahead and grab that glory. Grab your promise. Grab your breakthrough. Grab your blessing. Grab it. Hallelujah. Let's get to the word. Turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Whew. Greater glory. James chapter 1. Now, if you want to get to James, you can go to the back of the book. Revelation, just keep on scooting back. You'll get there. Amen. James chapter 1. Now, I have to warn you that this is not a shouting sermon. This is a practical, applicable sermon. So I want you to take notes. Stay on the edge of your seat. Because God has something to say that, to apply to your life to make your life better. Amen. The teacher in me is here today. But if you pull on the anointing of God in my life, the preacher and the prophet will show up. James chapter 1. I'm reading from the New International Version. Go down to verse 19. It's very familiar. James chapter 1 verse 19 in the New International Version. It says, my dear brothers and sisters... Take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. Thus ends the reading of the word of the Lord today. For just a few minutes, I want to teach and preach from the subject. Hurry up and listen. You may be seated. Father, preach through me in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay on the edge of your seat. Take notes. Today's applicable word. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. We're on a sermon series entitled Relationships, rated R, Relationships. And I thought it would be a mini sermon series. It would only be here a couple of weeks, but God has extended uh, the glory on relationships. And relationships are one of God's most powerful, influential, and significant creations. He created relationships, not you. Uh, he created your marriage, not you. He created the relationship between you and your children, you and your family, you and your manager, you and your clients, not you. It's quiet. Relationships are currency, currency in the kingdom, currency in ministry, currency in business, currency in building, and currency in life. That means relationships, specifically the right relationships, are the medium of exchange and growth and prosperity and flow. Somebody said, I just need one relationship. Just one right relationship can open some doors. One right relationship can close some necessary doors. One right relationship can change 
change everything. For example, um, in Genesis chapter 40, Joseph, uh, who was the son of Jacob, uh, he met one man, one butler that happened to be in the same prison he was in that changed his entire life. He went from the prison to the palace with one relationship. It wasn't just his anointing. It wasn't just his ability to interpret dreams. It was one relationship. Y'all quiet. Okay, let me give you another example for David in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 1 Samuel chapter 18. His relationship with Saul and his relationship with Saul's son Jonathan shifted everything. His entire life changed. He went from being a shepherd boy, hallelujah, to being a prince of princes. I heard a preacher say he went from rags to riches with one relationship. Y'all don't like this. Come here. Come here, Ruth. Ruth, her one relationship with Naomi took her from Moab, the place of loss, the place of lack, the place of death and disappointment to a place called Bethlehem, the place of promise and prosperity. I just need one relationship. Come here, Mary Magdalene, the woman who had seven demons, but with one relationship, with one connection with Jesus. She went from being vexed by devils to vexing devils. Somebody say, I just need one relationship. And our one relationship with Jesus if we are honest, has taken us from a place or a position of death to a place of promise and a place of protection and a place of power and a place of breakthrough. From, we've gone from a place, I don't, okay, let me just speak to myself. Let me just preach to Bettina. Because of my one relationship with Jesus, I have gone from the mundane to a place called more. And if I'm talking to anybody in here, I need you to shout, I've gone to a place called more. I've gone to a place called increase. I've gone to a place called abundance because of my connection with Jesus. For the Bible says the thief coming not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So don't get mad at me when I'm sitting in my abundance. It's because of Jesus. Don't get mad at me when I'm driving in my abundance. It's because of Jesus. Don't be mad at me when I'm living in my abundance. It's because of Jesus. Don't be mad at VLCM when we shout in abundance. Abundance. It's because of our one relationship with Jesus. I, I'm sorry, but can, I, can you give me one second just talk about Jesus? I'm talking about the King of Kings. I'm, I'm talking about the, the Lord of Lords. I'm talking about Mary's boy. I'm talking about Joseph's adopted son. I'm talking about Jesus. And if anything has been done in your life because of Jesus, give him 10 seconds of a Holy Ghost praise. If it wasn't for Jesus, I don't know where I would be. Okay, I can't speak for you. If it wasn't for Jesus, I would have lost my mind. I'm still standing here because of Jesus. I'm still breathing because of Jesus. Don't get me started. Y'all look like y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all look like you know my Savior. Y'all look like you know my Redeemer. Jesus. The more you say his name, the better you feel. The more you say his name, cancer will go running. Jesus, I dare you to open up your mouth and call on the name of Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus, the beginning and the end. Jesus, the Ancient of Days. Jesus, the one who woke you up this morning. Jesus, the one who clothed you in your right mind. In your right mind. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. If you're into law, he's the righteous judge. I am talking about Jesus.
Jesus. If you're in the midst of the storm, he is the prince of peace. Just one relationship. Okay, y'all not with me. They can leave me if they want to, but I got my one relationship. Talk about you if they want to. I got Jesus. Sit down. Sit down. If you need some direction, he's the great shepherd. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. If you're a wedding planner, planner, he is the bridegroom of the body. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, he's still downloading. He, he's the one who picked you up. He's the one who dusted you off. He's the one who turns you around and placed your feet on solid ground. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah. If you get some bad news, just call on the name of. If you get a negative diagnosis, just call on the name of. Slow down, slow down. Please be seated. Slow down, Bettina. Woo! 2023 was one of the most difficult years of my life, but I am still here because of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all can sit there if you want to, but I can praise him all by myself. Because if it had not been for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I didn't call me. It was Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't get the house because of my credit. I didn't get the apartment because of my name. It was. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Slow down. Jesus. 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 If there have to be some deep people in the on the line. I know his name in Hebrew. It's Yeshua Hamashiach. But I know that he knows English. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey. I remember one time I got an Uber. And um, the Uber was running a little late. But when, they, when he came, he took me to the place he, and he, he called up time. And I happened to look at his name, and his name was Jesus. And I realized, yeah, that wasn't Jesus, that was Jesus. Because he may not come when you want him. But he always gets you there. Right on. Okay, I'm talking about Jesus. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Please, please sit down. Let me get to this lesson. And one of the ways that we stay connected to him and stay in relationship with him is how we listen to him. Go ahead and take your seats. One of the ways that it shows that we are his disciples uh, is that we have the ability to listen. Okay, it's quiet. Y'all should have kept shouting because it's about to get tight up in here. John 10 says around verse 3, the sheep hear his voice, the shepherd's voice, Jesus' voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Meaning that if you listen closely, he'll get you out of some things. Okay. Then verse 4 says, and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. In order to know his voice, you got to know his voice. Okay. Verse 5, they will by no means follow a stranger, but flee from him, for they do not follow or know the voice of strangers. That means in order to know God's voice, you have to be in relationship with him. He needs to be not familiar, but familiar. Don't make him too common, but make his voice common enough that you know his voice from your voice and his voice from the devil devil's voice let's slow down Bettina and the only way to know the Lord's voice is to 
listen. You got it. And the only way to be in relationship with him is to listen. As a matter of fact, in both the Hebrew and the Greek, the word relationship means to get to know. And the only way you can get to know anyone, not just Jesus, but anyone um, in a relationship is your ability to listen to them. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. James 1 and 19 says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note, pay attention. Everyone should be quick to listen. Hurry up and listen. Notice I didn't say hurry up and hear. Notice the text doesn't say be quick to hear. It says be quick to listen because there is a difference between hearing and listening. This is a good time to take notes. Hearing is a sense. Listening is a skill. It's a learned skill. Hearing is the process uh, through how we perceive sound. But listening is when you pay attention to the sound that's being processed to you and then how you respond to it correctly. Hearing is a passive activity where sounds come into your ear and you receive them, but you don't have to necessarily be paying attention. Listening, however, suggests that there is an active effort on your part to pay attention so that you know what is being said. And since hearing is passive, it also means it's involuntary. You can't close your ears. Sounds going to get in there one way or another. But listening requires you to voluntarily concentrate on what is being said. Listen, exp- listening is specifically active listening. Write that down. Active listening is an imperative skill to acquire and sharpen in order for you to have healthy relationships in 2024. And I don't know about you, but we need some more healthy relationships. <laughs> I- I'm tired of seeing Facebook posts about who I'm cutting off January the 1st. <sighs> because that lets me know we need some healthy relationships Jesus had 12 homeboys and he only lost one because he had who's cried up in here healthy relationships you done lost all 12 maybe it's not them baby maybe it's you hurry up and listen and it's important that we start listening and because one of the reasons a lot of relationships are unhealthy and while they're broken and while they are in despair is because people don't like to listen And because we don't like to listen, we subconsciously refuse to listen. What's really concerning is that we refuse to listen to the people who love us. To the people who can help us and the people who want the best for us. It's about to get real tight up in here. We don't listen to our spouses. We don't listen to our family. We don't listen to our parents. We don't listen to our children. We don't listen to our leaders. We don't listen to our managers. We don't listen to each other. We don't listen to the pastor or the preacher. Some of you have stopped listening to me right now. And I'll be doggone, but some of you don't even listen to God. I'll come back to that. I believe listening is the most powerful tool we have in healthy relationships. Now, some may disagree with me and say that love is the most powerful tool we have in relationships, and that is a legitimate point. But how can you probably love someone or appropriately show them that you love them without listening to find out how they like to be loved? And a lot of relationships have difficulty because most times we love people how we want to be loved and not how they want to be loved because we don't like to listen. Your child recognizes love by quality time, but instead of you spending time with them, you give them gifts. No, that's what you like. Your spouse loves physical touch, but instead of touching them and hugging them and cuddling with them, you're giving them words of affirmation. They don't care about that. That's what you like. And then you, they walk away from the conversation and the interaction or maybe even the relationship altogether, believing that you don't truly love them because you're not showing them how they prefer to be loved because you didn't listen to them. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. And then another problem that we have, no, some people, I'll be nice today. Don't listen to receive and review. Most people listen to respond and react. We don't learn. We don't gain knowledge. We don't acquire information because we don't like to listen. We don't listen to truly know a person. We don't listen to grasp the heart of the man or woman. We listen so that we can appear like we care. So they can then grasp about what we care about. So we can turn our opinion into their opinion. 
We want them to listen to what we have to say and what we believe to be true and not listen, truly listen to what they have to say. In other words, we often listen with the wrong intentions and the wrong motives. We listen to have our say and not lend our hear. It's quiet. And you can tell when someone is not actively listening to you by their ability to easily interrupt you. I knew I wasn't going to get no amens. Let me rephrase that. Oftentimes, people are so consumed with their own thoughts and their own opinions that while somebody is talking or somebody is speaking, they can't wait to jump in and cut them off. And when you do this, when you cut somebody off in their mid-conversation, you minimize their message and you marginalize the messenger. It's quiet up in here. Hallelujah. And when you cut people off, you're saying, hallelujah, that what they're saying is of no significance. It, it lacks importance. It's, it's not relevant comparison to what you have to say. Uh, ooh, not only does interrupting show that you may not truly care about what they have to say, but also show that you are not actively listening. But then the Bible goes further and probably verse 18 and 13 it says he who answers a matter before he hears it in full is both shameful and foolish it's quiet the bible is saying it is foolish to cut people off it is foolish to cut off somebody in mid conversation without knowing all the facts somebody say hurry up and listen i know i messed up right up in there i just lost about 20 of you because you're waiting to interrupt somebody right now but listening unlocks revelation Listening unlocks answers. Listening gives clarity. Listening gives solutions. Listening gives hidden information. Listening gives data and details. Listening unlocks knowledge and instruction. Listening gives you facts and news that you don't so desperately need. Listening unlocks hidden mysteries. Listening unlocks discernment. Okay. If you want to know where someone stands with you, listen. If you want to know where, where you stand with someone, listen. If you want to know where someone's heart is, listen. If you want to know whether that person is truly your friend or not, and I've learned that you can listen with your ears and you can listen with your eyes. One of the synonyms for the word listen is the word observe. And observing is when you listen and when you take notice and when you pay attention to what is being said and seen. So if someone says one thing but does another and you miss it, it's your fault because you were not listening. Okay. Because proper active listening reveals truth and lies. Yeah. If you want to know if someone is telling the truth, listen. But if you want to know if someone is lying, you got to learn to listen. Because if they keep talking, the truth about the lies is going to come out one way. Or another. We've got to learn how to say less. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. And one of the problems or hindrances to our ability to listen um, is our lust or desire or appetite or craving to be heard ourselves. It's quiet up in here. here one of the hindrances is we, we like to be heard. We, people want to be heard. Have mercy. People love to talk. Okay. People love to talk a lot. A lot of people like to talk a lot. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm making my point. I'm an introvert, but I got extroverted gifts. And so I got a lot of extroverted friends. And I have a lot of extroverted family. And they, baby, they like to talk. Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, the weekend after Thanksgiving, December 1st. Listen, baby, because they like to talk. I shared this before, but research says that the average person speaks at least 7,000 words a day. <laughs> at minimum, 7,000 words. But can I give you something? That's the average man. Women, on the other hand, speak between 13,000 and 20,000 words per day. That's double than the brother. On average, that's between 4.75 million and 7.3 million words per year. 
And additionally, in just one day, they have over 20 conversations lasting at least 10 minutes. That adds up to almost four hours per day. And that is not even the amount that includes the email you typed, the memos, the text messages, or what you posted on social media. Okay. We often share our opinions, our innermost thoughts, our points of view, our personal stories, our past tales, our sentiments, our speculations, and even our presumptions to anybody who will listen, especially on social media. You think you're just telling your close friends? No, you're telling your future boss, maybe. You're telling your co-workers. You're telling your enemies. You're telling your future business partners. You're telling your future spouse. You're telling your children, your family, your church family. Your pastor is quiet up in here. And you're telling your telemarketers and your bill collectors your business. We tell them where we are. We tell them where we're going, what we're going to eat. What we are thinking about, what somebody else should or should not be doing. We put our business out there like our ideas and our dreams as well as our complaints. And you're sharing with people who really do not care. Some of them are just nosy. And then you get these monitoring spirits where people are monitoring your posts and know your every move. But it's not their fault, it's yours because you told them, sugar. And then you wonder why you're under attack. You wonder why you're tired. You wonder why you're stressed. It's quiet. You wonder why you're depressed. It's because you talked a little too much. And you posted a little too far. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. And I'm concerned that our inability to hush is hindering our ability to hear. Often people who have a talking problem normally have a hearing problem. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. Another hindrance before I get kicked out of my church to our ability to listen properly and appropriately are distractions. Distractions are everywhere. All you got to do is pick up your phone. But sometimes we use distractions as a coping mechanism to difficulty. Mm. If something like a task or a responsibility is too hard, a person will allow a distraction, like a game on their phone, a movie, a TV series on Netflix, or even social media to divert your attention from the task at hand. It's quiet. And if you're not careful, that diversion can turn from a temporary distraction to a permanent procrastination. Procrastination is a prideful assumption uh, saying that God is going to give you or he has to give you more time to do what he has given you to do. Procrastination is also the prideful assumption that God wants you somebody else to do what you're sitting on your lazy, lazy tail not doing. Okay. I need to let you know that tomorrow is too late to listen to God when he told you to do it today. And the enemy loves when you are too distracted to listen because he knows distractions derail destiny. Not only do distractions derail or delay destiny, distractions can also circumvent critical conversations. I get it. Critical conversations are not in command right now. They're not in demand. They're in the void. And some relationships right now are on pause or simply broken because we are avoiding the very critical and necessary conversation. It's quiet up in here. I'm preaching to myself. And we are so distracted sometimes that we miss what our son was saying. And we miss what our daughter was conveying. We miss what our spouse was trying to share with us or our leader or our manager was trying to instruct us because we don't hurry up and listen. We've missed pivotal moments in conversations because we are distracted. So we have to learn how to block out distractions so that we can hurry up and listen. We've got to learn how to block out our worries and our fears and our bills and our emotions and our feelings and our responsibilities and even the noise on our phone so we can hurry up and listen. It's quiet up in here. Another hindrance to our ability to listen properly and appropriately is pride. And I'm not going to go in depth here, but if you're not careful, pride can prevent you from growing. Let me prophesy. This is the only prophecy I may give today. 2024 is the year to grow. Okay. 2024 is the year to expand. That's what I heard. I heard early in the year. 2024 is the year to advance. 2024 is the year to stretch. But because pride prevents people from listening, it can prevent you from growing. 
Growth requires that we listen to feedback. Okay. The degree that you are unwilling to listen to others is the degree you are not growing in your faith, your purpose, your walk, your talk, your call, your maturity overall as a believer. How you hear can determine your height. Meaning your ability to listen to feedback and correction and constructive criticism and critique will determine how high you go and how deep you grow. It's quiet. And if every time someone gives you a review, you retaliate. You're not ready to go to the next level and you might just stay there a little too long. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. I told you it wasn't a shouting sermon. You should have went with a shout at the beginning of the sermon. We could have stayed on Jesus. We'd be out right now. Hallelujah. But according to this author by the name of Stephen Covey, there are five levels to listening. Write this down. Number one, the first level is the level of ignoring. It's where when someone is talking, we completely ignore what they are saying. Number two is pretend listening. <laughs> where we use eye contact and body language to show that we are engaged. And listening, but in reality, you're really thinking about something or someone else. Number three, the third level is selective listening, where we listen to parts of the conversation. The part that interests us, and when it's not interesting, we shut off our ears. Now, the problem with this level, uh, selective listening can um, create misunderstandings. We only hear a piece of the story. The fourth level is attentive listening. This is where we pay attention and really take in what is said, and we demonstrate it by responding properly with our words and actions. However, unfortunately, this level of listening is still based on our re relatability to hear what someone is saying based on our own experience. So we don't hear what they said, we hear what we heard. The fifth level is empathetic listening. This is where we concentrate and we listen to understand the intent behind the message. Empathetic listening is the gold standard, he said. This is when we truly listen to what is being said with our mind and with our heart. This is also when we hear what is not being said. Okay, I'm going to get to that. There is another level of listening that Mr. Covey missed, which brings me to my last hindrance on listening. Another hindrance to our ability to listen properly and appropriately, especially in this current era, especially in this current generation, is our lack of knowledge and understanding. Hosea said, my people are destroyed, perish for a lack of knowledge. But God's people are also weak and in decline due to a lack of understanding. Yeah. You don't believe me, it's in the Bible. Proverbs 2 and 11, understanding will keep you. Understanding will guard you, will protect you. It's quiet. Understanding will keep you safe. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get you some. But in all your getting, get you some understanding. Yeah. And a lot of times relationships are broken due to conversations that we had where we did not get a full understanding of what was said. So this next level of listening, the pro level that I like to call it, is the level of understanding and comprehension. And there is a difference between listening to what was said and com comprehending what they said. It's quiet. Comprehension means that you didn't just listen to the content, you listened to the context. Mm -hmm. Context over content. Context dis diminishes confusion. Context gives meaning to the content. Context gives meaning to the message. It gives definition to the discourse. It gives meritorious magnitude to the messenger. Context uh, is what shows that we really care. And if you take one scripture out of context, you can ruin somebody's life. And if you take one quote out of context, you can ruin yours. So in all thy getting, get an understanding, but all thy listening, get you some context. And sometimes we diminish our comprehension because we heard things out of context. So, you know, you've learned how to active listen. You've learned how to be attentive. You learned how to empathetically listen. But if you did not comprehend, understand what was said, you could still be in the dark void called misunderstanding. For example, your spouse said, I love you. You are my boo thing. Ooh, you great with the kids, sir. You're an amazing parent. I love how patient and resilient you are. I can't wait to say that. Amen. However, I wish you would work on helping around the house more. Okay. 
They said you were great. They said you were amazing. In fact, they said all that you were patient and resilient. But what you heard was, I don't do enough. And now you're mad because you think you go above and beyond. I work, I cook, I, I clean, I bathe the kids, I do this, I do that. And now you're saying it's not good enough? No. What they said was, you're absolutely amazing, but I need more of your amazing help. It's quiet up in here. Here's another example. The manager said, you're a good employee. You're doing an amazing job. Your work ethic is above standard. But you need to work on your communication and follow up with the team. You didn't hear how well you're doing on the job. You didn't hear the compliment on your work ethic. All you heard was you don't communicate, so you must be a failure. And that's not what the manager said, but that's what you heard because you heard him or her out of context. And now you're mad and you're about to give them a two weeks notice without a new job in view. And the fact of the matter is you're upset because you listen to the negative and not the positive, which proves you need to work on your communication. Just like the manager said, don't get tight. I'm talking to myself. I got another example. The pastor said, I believe in you. I love you. You are prophetic, but I don't believe, I don't think you're necessarily a prophet. But what you heard the pastor say was, I'm not good enough. What you heard was, I'm not valued. Now you're mad and you want to leave the church and you want everybody else to leave the church with you when all you have to do is listen with comprehension and or understanding. Matter of fact, ask some questions so you can understand what is really being said. And if you asked the right question, you would have realized the pastor was saying your fruit does not display that you're a prophet because you run and quit at the first sign of warfare. But because you're great at encouraging people, you're prophetic. God bless you. And until you're ready to fully function as a prophet in the midst of warfare, in the midst of slander, in the midst of attack, in the midst of Jezebel, in the midst of loss, in the midst of death, in the midst of rejection, in the midst of whispers from the enemy, you're not ready to receive the title prophet until you can properly handle those trials and still function as a prophet and not lose your mind. Somebody say, hurry up and listen. And if you would listen, if you would listen to understand, if you would listen to comprehend, there would be less misunderstandings. There would be less offense. There would be less bitterness. There would be less resentment. There would be less discord. There will be less disagreements. There will be less hard feelings. There will be less mess. I didn't have no other way to say it. Less manure. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Pay attention. Everyone should be quick to listen. Then he says, slow to speak and slow to become angry. The text reveals that our mouth and our madness is determined by our ear. <laughs> if we focus on becoming better listeners, it would push us to be less talkers. And it would also minimize madness it's quiet we've got to learn how to discipline our ear which can restrain our tongue and temper our emotions okay. somebody say hurry up and listen and I believe here that this, this text written by James, this is not James, the son of Zebedee. The, most theologians believe this is James, the half-brother of Jesus. And he can say this and give practical information all throughout James because he didn't listen to Jesus at first. He didn't believe him that he said he was the son of God while he grew up in the house with him. But after he saw Jesus get up, here's what I'm trying to say. If people don't have to listen to what you say. Let them listen to what you do. You could have died this year. You could have died last month. But baby, I got up another day and you ought to listen okay let me pause here and say prophets let me talk to the prophets the pastors the leaders church planters parents husbands wives if you want someone to listen to what you have to say make sure that what you're saying is worth listening to stop 
wasting your words. Stop wasting your time with unnecessary words. And stop wasting your necessary words with unnecessary people. I believe the Bible says stop casting your pearls to swine. <laughs> but if you want people to listen to you, elevate your words. Okay, <laughs> y'all missed it. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Pay attention. Everyone should be quick to listen. We quick though. We quick to want to get to our next. We quick to get to our next level, our next place, our next job, our next relation. We quick to get to our next church. But are we quick to listen? It's quiet. Y'all don't like me. Being quick to listen means that you got to hush. Mm -hmm. Being quick to listen means it's not for everybody, but those that are charismatic. You know, speak in tongues, yes, but sometimes you need to hush so we can get you a new tongue. Okay, it's all right. Okay. Bye. All right, it's all right. Quick to listen means that you listen with promptness, with rapidity, with exigency, with urgency. Means that you are ready to listen. Not just ready to talk. Which brings me to my next point. I'm closing. I'm done. I'm almost done. What are you listening to? Our ear. The object in between this noggin. This, this ear. This commodity. This vehicle. Is, it's not just an ear. It's a gate. Just in case you don't know what a gate is, it's a, a movable barrier that opens and closes to, to permit someone or something in a place of importance. A gate, an ear, is an access point. It's a doorway. It's an entryway. So our ears are doorways and gateways to our mind and our thoughts. So what you hear has the power to rule your state of mind. What you hear has the power to rule your ideas and your perspectives, your beliefs, and even your dreams. Okay? Our ears are also the doorway and the gateway to our heart. Is this okay? Y'all all right? That means what or who you listen to has the power to rule your feelings, <laughs> your emotions, your sentiments, your sympathy, your mood, your disposition, your attitude, your sensitivities is ruled by your ear. Your ear is the entrance, but your mouth is the exit. And I can tell what you're listening to by what you say. And if you don't know what to say, and if what you're saying is not edifying, hurry up. Oh, you got it. Y'all preaching my sermon. So you must be careful on what you're listening to. Let's be careful who you're listening to. This is, not, I'm, this is not what you think is, I'm not going where you think I'm going. I don't care what music you listen to. Do what your prayer life can handle. <laughs> Go see her. I don't care. Do what your prayer life can handle. Her tour over, you missed it. God bless you. But I, I, I need us to be careful and concerned about who we are listening to. Who you, who you should listen to is hidden in the text. It's, it's in there. If you jaywalk over to verse 22, it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. In other words, the preeminent voice you should be listening to is the voice of God. Somebody say, God, he talks. I love him. Hey, oh, I'm so sorry. Give me a second. He talks. He speaks. Woo, hallelujah. He tells you where to go. He tells you where not to go. He tells you who to get close to. He tells you who not to get close to. He tells you who to trust. He tells you who he, he talks. <laughs> and he predominantly speaks through his word. He speaks in other ways as well. I taught a class on um, the secrets to hearing God's voice where I taught in depth on 30 ways to hear God's voice. It's still out there on, on uh, School of the Pros Facebook page. You can go look at it. I don't have time um, to go in depth on that, but I just want to let you know that God talks, but the question is, are you listening to what he's saying? Leaders, it's time to listen. Because people are expecting you to know what's next. And the only way to know what's next is to 
Okay. All right. Fathers, husbands, priests of the house, the, they are counting on you to know where the family is going. And if you don't know where it's going, you've got to. Okay. Okay. All right. Business owners, you are counting on you to succeed. And the one way to know where su su success is, is to. Okay. Okay. Pastors, visionaries, church planters, they are expecting you to know what's coming in 2024. They're expecting you to know what's coming all the way in 2030. And the only way to know what's next, the only way to know the next step is if you. Okay. And so according to James, I'm going to my seat. God speaks through trials. Moonwalk to James chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, which means various trials or diversified troubles. Have you noticed this year that trouble got some diversification? I mean, just, I thought I had mastered warfare. But then 2023 came. Have mercy. And I had to lean on James chapter 1, verse 2. The message version says, consider it a gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you. Watch this. From all sides. Mercy. So this lets me know that God can speak in loss. Losing is a lesson. Okay, let me say it like this. It was not a loss. It was a lesson. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it wasn't lack. It wasn't a lecture. It was a tutorial. Okay, I'm sorry. Y'all don't like this. It wasn't a defeat. It was divine discourse. Huh? Y'all don't like it. It wasn't hurt. It was homework. You didn't, you didn't suffer. You were in seminary. And I don't care what you lost in 2023. You didn't lose. You learned. Okay. Maybe I'm just talking to me. Maybe I'm just talking to me. I didn't. I didn't. I learned. My brethren, watch this. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience, watch this, have her perfect work that you may be perfect. The word perfect means mature and complete. Lacking nothing. So you ought to look at what you lost this year and say, I may have lost, but I'm lacking nothing. I may have lost you, but I'm lacking nothing. You may have kicked me to the curb, but I'm lacking nothing. You may have dropped me, but I'm lacking. Y'all don't, don't know. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know when to dance. Because they, when they left, you could have lost your mind. But look at you. With your purple, beautiful self in those purple chairs, and you ain't lacking nothing. Did it mess up your bottom line? Did you lose your house when they walked away? You ain't lack. Let me preach. You ain't lacking nothing. If I'm talking to you, holler back at your girl. You ain't lacking not nothing. My grandma used to say nothing. I'm sorry. It taught you, and now you're lacking nothing. It got, you got a little bit more wisdom, and now you're lacking nothing. You got a little bit more discernment, <laughs> and now you're lacking nothing. You got a little bit more peace, if you're honest, and now you're lacking. Okay. Sit down. 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 I can't testify for you, so I can only testify for me. I was dating this guy, and um, I can tell the story because he got me blocked. It don't even matter. Um, dating this guy, and we were almost married. We were about to go get engaged. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> we were about to get engaged, and uh, but I didn't realize how much I had lost along the way. I had lost peace. 
I had lost my voice. And I wanted to be married so bad that I was willing to lose everything to get married. I wanted to prove to the world that Bettina Bunny was going to get married. And then, I can't tell you the whole story, just know that we broke up. Okay? Got a word from the Lord, from his pastor, as a matter of fact, and we broke up. And I thank God for his pastor. I thank for the word of the Lord through his pastor. And when, when we broke up, I wasn't as heartbroken as I thought I would be. I ain't done. And I went to my mama. And I said, Ma, why is it my heart broken? The first thing she said was, baby, I was just waiting on you. I was like, why you ain't say nothing? Baby, this your life. I was just waiting for you to see. That was number one. The second thing she said was, it doesn't hurt because being away from them is better than being with them. I kind of put the story out on Facebook the day as I was preparing for this message. I almost went into bankruptcy being engaged to him because I was paying his bills and my bills at the same time right after the 2008 crash. Y'all don't hear me. Okay. I had lost almost everything. I had pawned almost everything. Y'all not with Y'all don't know nothing about pawn shops. They don't even... They don't even use VCRs no more, but I pawned every VCR we had. The VCR, the DVD, the CD player. We had one TV in the living room. But I was willing to walk away. And when, within one year, one year later, not only did I get what I lost, but I got double what I had. What I'm trying to let you know is if you learn how to listen in spite of the loss, you'll get double for your trouble. I'm done with my little Easter speech, but I need to let you know that God speaks through loss. You want my last point? Because we can just close right here. Y'all want my last point? My brother encountered all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, that word temptation means test. So God speaks through tests. Best example I could give you is the example in Genesis 12. Abram, get out your country. Get from away from your kindred. Get away from your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. And when you get there, I'll make you great. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. And the Bible lets us know all of that happened, right? He heard the voice of God. He obeyed the voice of God. Watch this. And then he passed the test. Are y'all with me? Yeah. That, that's, that, that was test one. But tests are given in intervals. Yeah. That's right. That's right. At different points, different times of your life. And if you are revisiting the same test, that means you ain't passed yet. Okay. <laughs> Tests are given in intervals. Watch this. And he passed, which gave him Isaac, the son of promise. I can't tell the whole story, all right? And so that was Genesis 12. But it's in Genesis 22, here comes God talking again. It says, Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Take him up to the mountains and sacrifice him. And I want you to go to the place that I will show you. Doesn't that sound familiar? Watch this. You know God's voice when it sounds familiar. You know God's voice when it sounds like what you heard when he said, don't go there. Ooh, you know it's God's voice when it's a voice of protection. Okay. This, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? I've heard this before. Last time he told me to make a move and he would bless me. That's what happened with Abraham. And he made the move. God blessed him. Watch this. He didn't hear God's voice again until he lost Lot. God didn't speak again to him until Lot left him. And I need to let you know that sometimes you can't hear God because you have a lot to lose. Okay, I'm sorry. There's a sermon in there, but that's not my point. My point is God speaks intermittently. But that means that you got to listen expeditiously. 
Genesis 22, God tells Abram, Abraham, take your son, your son of promise, your prophecy. Take this promise that I gave you. Go to the mountain that I'll show you, and I want you to give it back to me. Okay. Okay. I want you to hand over what I handed to you. Steve, keep saying I'm done. And here, here's him and his son trekking. Abraham and Isaac trekking. And trekking with some servants. And they're going step by step. God ain't said nothing yet. All right? And then he, he finally sees the mountain. And he says to his servants, stay here with the donkey. Me and the lad. That word lad there means young man. That means Isaac was grown. Okay. And we're going to go up to yonder to worship. And then we're going to come back to you. Okay, that's faith. I don't have time. So Abraham took the wood, uh, gave it to Isaac to hold, got the fire in his hand, got the knife, and they start walking. And if you notice, the closer you get to breakthrough, the less people you have as a distraction. Okay, I'm sorry. And as they start walking, they walking. And I just want to let you know, sometimes you won't hear God's voice until you start walking. Yeah. Sometimes he won't say a move or make a move until you make a move. Okay, okay. That's just that was a download. Just Abraham and his son. Now it's just you and your spouse. Now it's just you and your children. Ah, Now it's just you and your responsibilities, following the voice of God. And they walk in, and I says, "Daddy, I see the wood. I see the fire." But where is the sacrifice? God does not always give you all the details. But he is still expecting you to obey the data. The data is he told me to walk before and he blessed me. He told me to take steps before and he kept me. He told me to keep going forward and he protected me. Y'all not with So you got to learn how to watch the data when you don't have the details. Look in your history books and see how the Lord may him help you make it through 2020. See how the Lord kept you in the pandemic. See how the Lord kept you in 2022. You got to look at the data when you don't have the details. I'm, 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 and they're walking. They came to the place. They build the altar. Abraham lays his son on the altar. Ties him up so he don't run. Takes a knife in his hand. He's about to slay him. And the voice of the Lord says, wait, Abraham. Don't slay your son. Don't put a hand on him. What if Abraham had stopped listening? What if Abraham only listened to the first instruction and then continued to listen to the next instruction? See, the problem is because we don't listen, we operate with outdated information. Some of your relationships, your marriages, your friendships are operating on old data. You're communicating with your spouse with old data. You're communicating with your children with old data. You're communicating with your team with old data. And you're wondering why they can't keep up. And when you're functioning with outdated information, you are functioning in dysfunction. It's okay. Okay. So yesterday, as I was studying, putting this together, I noticed my laptop was not functioning properly. Okay. Uh, it was sluggish, and look, it was expensive, so I needed it to work. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm still paying on it. Huh? Software was running low. It was running real slow. Web browser was glitchy. The apps were malfunctioning. Stay with me. I'm almost done. And I happened. I was like, what's wrong with this thing? <laughs> Sir. Ma'am, I need you to work. I got to preach tomorrow. And some said, look at your settings. And it, it said in my settings that my laptop required an update. And if I, had, would, if I would have just downloaded the update, it would fix my issues and upgrade my entire system. And if I would just download the new update, it would upgrade my apps my keyboard settings, my privacy, my safety settings, my accessibility, it would give me new features and improvements on my laptop. And some of you need to download a new update so God can upgrade your relationships. Okay. 
And the only way to download the update is to upgrade your ear. I'm done with my little Easter speech. In this season, it's time to upgrade your ear. I Meaning, I don't have time for any more gossip. <laughs> I'm done. I don't have time for any more drama. I don't have time for any more mess. I don't have time for any more confusion. I don't have time to hear that clutter. I'm too busy listening for God. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Look at somebody and say, I don't have time. So if they come to you with some mess, say, I'm, too, I'm sorry, I don't have time. If they come to you with some drama and gossip, say I don't have time. Look, I don't mean no harm. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I just don't have time. I'm too busy listening to God telling me how to get to my upgrade, telling me how to get to my next, telling me how to get to my promise. If I'm talking to you, holler back at your girl. So if they come to you with some sound of say, mm-mm, I gotta hurry up and listen. If they come to you with some gossip and lies, say, mm -mm, I've gotta hurry up and listen. If they come to you with some old news, say, uh uh, sis, I gotta hurry up and listen. If they come to you with some lies about another church, say, mm mm, brother, I gotta hurry up and listen. If they come to you talking about somebody's marriage, say, I'm so sorry, mm mm. I got to hurry up and listen because if I hurry up and listen, I'll hurry up and grow. If I hurry up and listen, I'll hurry up and go. If I hurry up and listen, I'll hurry up and grow up. If I hurry up and listen, I'll hurry up and go to my next level. Somebody say hurry up. I don't have much time. 2024 is knocking on my door. And I believe 2024 is about to blow my mind. If I'm preaching to you in these purple chairs, I dare to give God a hurry up hallelujah. I said if I'm talking to you, give God a hurry up hallelujah. And if you hurry up, and give him a hallelujah he'll hurry up and give you a breakthrough you got 20 seconds to hurry up and say hallelujah so you can hurry up and get to your blessing at the count of three i want you to open up your mouth and give god a shout give god a praise for the blessing that's on the way one he's been good Two, he's been kind. Three, he's protected me. Shout. 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 I hear you. I hear you. Shout for your children. Shout for your woman, shout for your man, shout for your family, shout for your grandchildren, shout for your promise, shout because he kept your mind, shout, shout, this is your time to talk now, shout, Sh let him hear you. listen I'm done I ain't got nothing else God speaks through trouble and God speaks through tests and I think the problem is we keep failing tests in our relationships because we don't go to him about them we go to him for everything else new this new that but we don't go to him. God, how do I make it through this marriage? God, how do I make it through this singleness? God, help me to be a better parent. It's quiet up in here. Help me to be a better father. Help me to be a better mother. I'm listening to you. 
hurry up and listen. If you're here today, I believe God has something to say to you. But I believe you have something to say to him. There's something that you need to say to him today. Somebody needs to give him another yes. Somebody needs to give him another I surrender. Somebody in here needs to give him I hear you. Now I got to obey. The word here in the Hebrew doesn't just mean to hear. It means to also do what you heard. One word for two actions. So today, as you heard this word, it's time for you to do something. Some of you here today, because you are supposed to take a step to your next. It's quiet. I need the intercessors praying. The, the music ministry is going to play something really softly. Listen to what I'm inviting you to do. If you're here, you want to give your life to Christ, come on. By the way, Jesus is in the text that I gave. He was the brother of James. And in my last story, he was Isaac. Isaac being sacrificed on the mountain was a foreshadowing of Jesus being sacrificed on the mount called Golgotha. Jesus is all in the text. If you want to give your life to him, come on. If you want to recommit, come on. If you want to join VLCM, come on, I see you. Come on. If you want to be baptized by water and or fire, come on. Make this place your home. Come on, music ministry. Let's sing for a moment while they make a decision. Come on, come on. Come on. You got something that you got to say to him. Come on. that in the spirit welcome home with all rights and privileges as a disciple here at VLCM I can't wait to get to know you I can't wait to love on you I can't wait to shepherd you and help you get to your next level your gifts are going to be unlocked here you hear me your destiny is going to be unlocked here and you will get the victory there may be some tests there may be some trials but you're going to get the victory is that right VLCM if you would go with minister Angela where is where are you Oh, she, she sees she, right there. She's waving in the back. We're going to take you to the VIP room and get you some victory. Come on, VLC. Let's give God worship. Come on. Hey, Justin. I know you love Jesus. Justin is coming to VLCM. Come to join us, the disciple. With all rights and privileges. Welcome home. Here, you're going to be stretched. You're going to expand. And God's going to pour into you. All that you lost in the last few years. He's going to catch you up. And it ain't going to take long. VLC, will you love on Justin? Tell him he's going to get the victory. If you would go with Minister Angela, she's going to take you to the VIP room. God bless you. Come on, VLC, we ought to give God glory. I just want you. 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 Come on, make it official. Come on, make it official. Come on, come on, come on home. Come on, come on home. Come on home. We'll teach you how to hear God's voice. Come on, come on home. I don't need it, God. I don't need it, God. Take everything, Lord. Take everything. What's your name? I don't want it. God bless you, new If you come stand over here, come on. Um, come on, just stand right here. Come closer. We're going to pray for you. If you need prayer, come on, you come. If you want to join, come to me. If you need ministry, come here. We got you. We got you covered. If you want to join, come to me. But if you need ministry, go, go that way. We have you covered. I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. And I know you hear him well. Take everything, Lord. And BLC and everything. But I believe you need BLC. I don't want it. Quick. I was praying and I was seeking God 
on your behalf before you even came. I was seeking him on your behalf, which let me know that eventually you would come. I didn't know it was going to be today. And I was seeking God for you. And the Lord says that she, you, are an answer. And we pray a lot. There's a lot that we need, but you are an answer here. You and your baby, while you're here, you are an answer. And there are some gifts and assignments you have put to the side. You have put on the shelf, like a trophy shelf. And these, these gifts are like trophies where you can look back over your life and say, God was with me there, God was with me there, God was with me and my baby there, God was with me and my son there, we, he was there. The Lord says, get ready for some new trophies. And as you continue to, to serve him, not just here, but on your job, watch this. God is going to use you on your job to bring people to Jesus. Mark my words. The Lord says to tell you, welcome home to a place where not only you will be an answer, but you'll get some answers. VLCM, can you love on her and her baby? Welcome home with all rights and privileges here at VLCM. I'm going to go ahead and take you in. Just come on. I know you, you got to go back home eventually, but I'm going to go ahead and just take you in. Even, even when you're there, I'm going to just take you in. I'm going to shepherd you even from a distance. Watch. Watch. Because in this next season, I've already told you part of where you're going, but in this next season, you're going to have to hear God for yourself even better. You hear me? You're going to have to hear God for yourself even better. And so before you go, I want to unlock some things on the inside of you. It is my job to unlock your destiny. It is my assignment to unlock your future. And so y'all are in the right place. Can you go with, can someone take her to Minister Angela? Can you go with Elder Diantha, please? Come on, VLCM, love on this family. Tell them welcome to VLCM. Yeah. Anyone else? Come on. If you are new and you want to you want, you want have a conversation with me, you can, can come. If you want to join, you can come. If you want ministry, you can come as well. If you need prayer, if you need prayer, come on. If you need prayer. Huh? You want to join too? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. What's your name? Dolores. You believe in Jesus? Amen. Dolores Fulton. Welcome home with all rights and privileges here at VLCM as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I can't wait to get to know you. I can't wait to love on you and shepherd you. I cannot wait to pour into you. Your dry season is over. Welcome to the well, the place of water and refreshing. VLCM, can you love on her? Uh, I need another minister to go with her. Yes, can you go with Liz, please? Come on, VLCM, let's give God glory what he's doing in VLCM. Everybody standing, grab your neighbor by the hand really quickly. Just real quick. I'm going to keep ministering, but I want to dismiss for those that need to go. Squeeze your neighbor by the hand. If you want ministry, you can come stand right here. If you want to join or give your life to Christ, come to me. Squeeze your neighbor by the hand real quick. If you're watching at home, I believe someone is watching. That sermon was just for you. This is your season to take a moment to listen. Listen for your next instructions. Squeeze your neighbor by the hand. Father, as I squeeze my neighbor's hand, I declare that everything that they need is being released in this moment. God, this is a pivotal moment for my neighbor. And they need you. They need your protection. They need your power. They need your answers. They need your direction. Squeeze your neighbor by the hand. Father, release some answers through my hand. Use my hand to release peace. Yes, God. Use my hand to release joy. My neighbor will not succumb to depression in this season. In the name of Jesus, squeeze your neighbor's hand one more time. God, use my hand to release finances. Use my hand to release property. Use my hand to release prosperity in the name of Jesus. And Father, we, are thank, you for, we thank you for what you've done today. What our ears have heard and what our eyes have observed. We will take this word and feast on it for the rest of the week. And we are in expectation of what you will do in the next seven days. As we listen and tune in our ear to hear what thus said the Lord. Lord, speak to us. Spirit, speak to us. Because we have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God, speak to every leader, every husband, every father, every mother, every wife, every single person, every business owner. Speak. Should I take that job? Should I not? Should I move to that city? Should I not? Should I go there? Should I not? Should I lead that ministry? Or should I not? Give us answers. We need direction that we can only get from you. Squeeze your neighbor's hand one last time. Father, protect my neighbor. 
Protect the word that my neighbor received today. Protect the prophecy that my neighbor received today. Protect it, God. Protect their family. And while you're blessing them, bless me. Bless my family. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. BLCM, I'll see you online Thursday night at 7 or right here Sunday morning at 10. If you need ministry, you can come to the altar now. If you need prayer, you can come. If you want to join, you can come. Deacon Benjamin, can you come? I'm going to ask him to come pray with you. One of our leaders here, he's going to come pray with you. Amen. Anybody else need ministry? Need ministry? Need prayer? Need prayer? Okay. Lift your hands. Lord, there are some questions that this baby needs answered. Mm. Ooh. There are some things that she needs answers to. God, she needs some solutions. Not just her, but her family. So God, in the name of Jesus, release this answer. In the name of Jesus, she is so grateful. And God, let her never lose this spirit of gratitude. And God, restore what she's lost. But God, I thank you that this is her season of recovery. Mm -hmm. God said you're going to get something new, something new, some new friendships. Yes, God. Hey. Yes, yes, some new, new, uh-huh. I don't know what broke you in the last season, but God is literally putting you together step by step, day by day. You're going to a place called new. Yes, you are. Mm, hallelujah. He's doing a new thing in you, daughter. That's what he says, a new thing. You just keep seeking him. Woo, keep trusting him. Keep obeying him. Because right now you look crazy. The decisions that you've made, the steps that you've had to take, you look crazy. That's what people think about you. And the Lord says, you're not crazy. It makes no sense, but hallelujah, he's going to make faith. It's making faith in you. Like God, God is growing your faith in this season. Through every difficulty, through every test.
you need ministry, come on up. If you want to join, come on up. If you want to talk to me, come up. If you're new, you want to get to know your pastor, you come on up. If you're a visitor, you want to get to know me, you can come on up. If you need ministry, come on up. We have you covered. If you want to join, you can come on up. Come on.